Many establishments operate a discount period, commonly known as a happy hour. So now you understand why I chose the name Tabernacle Tales. As a seasoned marketer, I love Jean DeLibero's article on LinkedIn titled, Customer Experience, It's Why You Love Your Bartender. I love this paragraph. It's all about the customer experience. Great bartenders have had great customer experience in the bag for years. They rely on all sorts of data, structured and unstructured, filed neatly away in their bartender brains. They use those insights to increase sales and keep those customers coming back. Great bartenders probably don't use the same lingo as your average marketer, but they've got that end-to-end -end experience thing down to a science. Ultimately, they want the same result as marketers. More customers flowing into the hopper, meaning visiting the bar. More conversions, meaning buying more drinks. Amplifying positive brand behaviors, telling everyone they know that the bar is the best place to hang out. And retention, customer loyalty. In part two of my premiere episode, you will meet Cheryl, who rebounded from a layoff in financial services to become very successful in the insurance industry. Hi Cheryl, it's good to see you. It's been a while since you and I chatted. I know um, we worked together many years ago in financial services and I remember you introduced me to some great wines. So every time I drink wine, I think of you. Uh, <laughs> great I way to remember me <laughs> well I remember you in a lot of ways but um, wine especially um, I know you switched um, industries so you want to uh, tell me how you got started absolutely it was it's been a crazy fun ride but back in 2001 I was 38 years old and you and I were working at the same company together and they had announced that they were going to be laying some people off. And of course I was the victim of that. <laughs> one of a few people. Um, up until that point, I had been laid off at so many other companies that I worked for. I was always in the admin um, arena and not really happy. And so when I did get laid off at the beginning of 2002, a really good friend of mine had been already promoting her business and networking her business. And she had met uh, a district sales coordinator with Aflac. I think everybody knows who Aflac is. They have oh, the crazy, yes. crazy duck commercial on television. I had never heard of Aflac. I had never seen a duck commercial. So I called this man, Michael Kazara, who was a district sales coordinator in West Covina, California. I had nothing to lose. I had no idea what this was. I didn't know anything about insurance. So I interviewed with him and he explained to me what I would be doing, but I still really didn't get it. And I was just kind of desperate. So he said, sure, come on, you know, come on board. So I had to study very hard for quite a while to get my insurance license. And then finally, when I came into the office uh, to start my first day of work, I still had no idea what I would be doing. What that job entailed was working in the realm of employee benefits. So you had to cultivate mm -hmm. businesses, primarily small businesses, get that business owner to agree to sit down with you so that you could explain to him that he really needs to add Aflac as part of his his or her benefit package. The process to get to that point was extremely daunting for, especially if you have no idea uh, what cold calling is like. It is the scariest thing you will ever do in your entire life. My yes. first my first day, they sat me down in front of a phone with a phone book with a yellow pages. This is before we had, you know, good internet stuff yeah. in 2002. And it gave me a script and said, read that script and set appointments. And I did not do very well. I came home that first night crying to my husband. 
can't do this. I don't want to go back. And he, he held me and said, I'm going to cry now. <laughs> he said, <laughs> he said, just give it, just give it a chance. So I did. And it ended up being a really, really amazing career. And I had incredible success uh, over the last 21 years of, of doing this. Wow. I know, because I remember, I remember you telling me that, you know, like within the first two years, you were like a rock star. I'm, I'm frankly not surprised, Cheryl, because you, know, <laughs> you, you were always a go-getter. But, you know, people sometimes mistake our personalities that, you know, oh, we'd be great at sales. But I mean, the, the very word sales kind of gives me <laughs> like anxiety. So tell me about your successes. Well, we had to learn how to how to cold call. That's what you do. You pound the pavement and you knock on doors and you walk into a business. And when you're a stranger and you're walking into a business, everybody stops what they're doing and everybody turns around and they look at you like, warning, warning, stranger alert, stranger alert, Will Robinson, you know. Yeah. Uh, also on the phone, you can get hung up on. I had to master the verbiage and I had to master... Um, handling those objections, which I did. I started doing this um, March of 2002. By the end of that year of 2002, I had opened, I think, 11, 11 or so accounts, maybe 12. I can't recall off the top of my head, which was a lot yeah. in less than 12 months. Yeah. I had won in that process. Aflac offered five awards for a, a, a first year rookie agent, mm -hmm. I achieved all five of those awards, which, oh my in, gosh. which, <laughs> yeah, which included a trip to Aflac corporate paid for on Aflac wine and dine you so much fun. Wow. And then my second year in 2003, I was just on a roll. Let me back up Molly just for a quick second. After a few months, I of Aflac, I was really not enjoying the cold calling and my friend who was already promoting her uh, personal chef business and working with chamber of commerce and rotary. And she was networking. She was, you need to go to a chamber of commerce mixer. She took me to a, an evening mixer in um, I think it was Covina or West Covina, California. And I was like a kid in a candy store. There were all these business owners. And I walked out of there that evening with a handful of business cards Wow. So after after six months of cold calling, I stopped all of that and joined about five chambers of commerce. I was going to lunches, breakfasts, dinners, and I had phenomenal success doing that type of networking. Yeah. By my second year in 2003, at the end of two, I was still a rookie. You're a rookie for two years. I was an... Um, number one account opener in all of Los Angeles with 29 new accounts. So you learned to pivot then because you found that what you were doing initially wasn't quite working because it was something. Oh, absolutely. Else. So you had to pivot, find something else that then fit your personality and your style. And you were able to then really rise. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the cold calling knocking on doors is very, very hard. It is not an easy thing to do. And you still are, you still have to sell yourself when you're networking just because you're a fellow member of the chamber doesn't mean, Oh, come on in Cheryl. Well, yeah, sure. You can talk to my employees. I still had to work at it, but it was a much more warmer thing. And as you know, me, I, I can talk to anybody. Um, I never thought I would be good at sales and turned out I am. Yeah. That's such an interesting um, story, Cheryl, and I'm sure you'll inspire a lot of people who are afraid because, in fact, you know, I don't know whether I told you, um, I got my real estate license. And for a while, you know, I mean, it's in inactive status right now. But, um, you know, initially, I had to go into the office and then they would ask us to, you know, they give you um, a list of people that you have to call in in the area. And it's kind of like, it's, it's awesome. scary. Yeah. You call and then, you know, you if you don't get somebody, you leave a, a message and then you the next person comes up. So it's like automatic. And I'm telling you, I was not comfortable doing that. And when when I tell people, they say, but you speak so easily to people. It's it's completely different when I think when you have to talk to strangers 
and try to, you know, like open the door about something. So your story is really fascinating, Cheryl, and I'm really hoping that my listeners will will get inspired by, you know, how you didn't give up. So, you know, thanks to your husband, like make it happen. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he helped you also to give you the inspiration not to give up. And you also found ways that sort of uh, complemented your personality style and you've achieved a lot of success. Um, tell me about the awards you've won because I know you've won like a ton of them. <laughs> I did win a lot of awards and that was really exciting. The first year, I didn't even, I knew that the awards were available, but I was too busy and too focused getting those accounts. And because I wanted to make money, of course, yeah. <laughs> I was too busy pounding the pavement. And my manager would come up to me in the hallway at work. I'd be at the, the water cooler and he'd say, Hey, congratulations for what? What did I do? You got your whatever award. Um, so again, like I was saying, the first year award, um, it's the fourth of the first year was a trip to Aflac where I was, was wine and dine. My second year, they had four um, award series and I achieved all four of those, uh, which entailed a bonus and trips. And I went to Laughlin. I went to Vegas. Where else did I go? Palm Springs. Um, and, and it was just a, a really exciting. I think what fueled my fire also was that I was in a, an office with a really amazing region manager who was so motivating and we were a group of very new agents who all liked each other and we had so much fun together and we'd rah rah and cheer each other on so that helped me a lot as well well sure it's been fun chatting with you um i've always loved your energy your enthusiasm and likewise my dear (laughs) amazing thank you for taking the time and thank you for your inspiration and Cheers to much more success. And we'll do this again soon. Absolutely, Molly. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to you. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. On Tabernacle Tales, my guests and I will discuss topical themes and have some spirited conversations so you can join me virtually for a happy hour with your favorite libation that may or may not involve spirits. And one thing's for sure. No ghosts allowed on Tabernacle Tales. We don't want to scare you away with booze. So I hope you stick around and tune in to Tabernacle Tales and listen to my guests and me take on some really cool topics. By the way, if you ever wondered where the expression mind your P's and Q's came from, It started in England when bartenders used to tell their rowdy patrons to mind their P's and Q's, meaning pints and quarts. Some bartender wisdom for you.